Ronnie Spector, the famed pop singer and frontwoman of the group The Ronettes, has sadly passed away at age 78 on January 12, 2022. She had one of the most distinctive voices in pop music, and her body of work should be celebrated for years to come. She formed the Ronettes with her older sister, Estelle Bennett, and their cousin Nedra Talley in 1957. She fronted that group while the now-disgraced, recently deceased, and convicted murderer, Phil Spector, produced the majority of their recordings. The Ronettes saw nine of their singles chart on the Billboard Hot 100, and five became top 40 hits. Some of their most popular songs included Baby I Love You, The Best Part of Breaking Up, and Walking in the Rain. As prolific as they were, the Ronettes only released one studio album, 1964's Presenting the Fabulous Ronettes featuring Veronica. That same year, they opened for the Rolling Stones, and in 1968, they opened for the Beatles on their U.S. tour. Ronnie and Phil got married in 1968, but separated in 72. She launched her solo career when she put out the single So Young. The Ronettes officially broke up in 67. Join Facts First as we take an in-depth look at Ronnie Spector's life and times while revealing how tragedy finally caught up with her in the end. Ronnie Spector's Early Career with the Ronettes Born Veronica Yvette Bennett in Washington Heights, Manhattan, Ronnie was the daughter of an Irish-American father and a mother of African and Cherokee descent. She and her sister, Estelle Bennett, were encouraged by their large family to start singing at an early age. With her cousin, Nendra Talley, the Bennett sisters formed a singing group called the Darling Sisters, which later became the Ronettes. At first, they performed locally around Washington Heights while they were attending George Washington High School, but they quickly became quite popular around the greater New York area. During the early 60s, they started looking to be signed to a record contract. They initially got signed to Colpix Records. Their first few singles were produced by Stu Phillips, a composer who later penned the theme songs for television shows like Battlestar Galactica and Knight Rider, but unfortunately these early songs failed to chart. The girls then sought out the help of producer Phil Spector, known for his signature wall of sound technique. Spector signed the Ronettes to his Phil's record label in 1963. Phil was the one who arguably turned the group into the success story they became. Almost immediately, they saw songs such as Be My Baby and Baby I Love You chart. In 1963, the songs The Best Part of Breaking Up, Do I Love You, and Walking in the Rain also rose up the charts. In 1966, the group had two Hot 100 hits with Is This What I Get for Loving You and Born to Be Together. The Ronettes were named the third best singing group in England in 1965, trailing behind the Rolling Stones and the Beatles. The following year, they opened for the Beatles on their 1966 U.S. tour. The Ronettes' final single with Spectre as their producer, I Can Hear Music, was released in the autumn of 1966. They then returned to New York with producer Jeff Barry. The following year, however, the Ronettes broke up after completing their European tour. Ronnie's Turbulent Marriage with Murderer Phil Spector Phil Spector was convicted in 2003 of the grisly murder of actress Lana Clarkson, and he passed away in prison just last year. But long before that, his relationship and subsequent marriage to Ronnie Spector was marred by control and abuse. Looking back on it, it's not hard to imagine how Phil eventually turned into the monster he ultimately became. With the Ronettes, Ronnie was known for being somewhat of a bad girl. In the years leading up to her death, she opened up about her traumatic and turbulent relationship with Phil. After helping the Ronettes land their string of hit singles, Phil and Ronnie married in 1968, shortly before the group split up. Ronnie wrote a memoir in 1990 titled Be My Baby, How I Survived Mascara, Miniskirts, and Madness. In that book, she shared that while she deeply admired Phil's musical abilities, she also described him as vindictive, controlling, and prone to violence. Strangely, Ronnie claimed that Phil kept a gold-plated coffin in their basement and threatened he would kill her if she ever considered leaving him. She wrote in her memoir that if she hadn't left him when he did, she knew she would have died by his hands. Ronnie further discussed how Phil kept her essentially locked away under lock and key at this mansion in California. There, he subjected her to egregious psychological and physical abuse. She was finally able to escape in 1972 with the help of her mother. She literally ran for her life, barefoot, only managing to just escape alive. Ronnie shared with People magazine in 2018 that she wouldn't have had the courage to leave if it wasn't for the insistence of her mother, who could see clearly her daughter was in a dire situation. 
After successfully fleeing from Phil, Ronnie made it a point to use her story to encourage other women in similar situations to work up the nerve to save their own lives. After their separation, Phil was awarded custody of their three adoptive children, twin brothers Louis and Gary and Dante Phillip. Phil then forced Ronnie to essentially sign her life away in a divorce settlement that cut her out of all future record earnings. At the time, Ronnie accused Phil of having pulled a gun on her and allegedly hiring a hitman to have her murdered. Years after their divorce, Phil still believed he had a level of control over Ronnie. In 2007, despite dealing with his ongoing murder trial, he campaigned to have her barred from being inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Ronnie and Phil's three adopted kids likewise reportedly endured trauma and abuse. Dante Phillip was quoted in a 2003 interview that he and his siblings had been abused by Phil and described their relationship as a thin line between love and hate. Phillip also accused Phil of trapping him and his siblings in their bedrooms with padlocks on their doors. After Phil died in 2021 at age 81, Ronnie made a post on social media saying it was a sad day for both the world of music as well as for her. She went on to describe working with Phil as being a lot like being in the presence of a musical genius and that falling in love with him was a lot like a fairy tale. What they were able to accomplish together was nothing short of magical. And before he showed his true colors, Ronnie said she was madly in love. But despite the good times they shared, she referred to Phil as a lousy husband, which is a bit of an understatement considering what we know about him now. Ronnie wrapped up her post by explaining that Phil was unable to live or function out of the studio. Even so, she expressed she still smiled whenever she listened to the music they made together. Ronnie's Later Life and Death After leaving Phil and going through the hell that was their divorce, Ronnie tried her best to rebuild her career. She chose to keep the last name Spectre because she knew that it was the name people knew her by. And she needed a way to get a footing back in the music industry. She went on to release five solo albums and collaborated with dozens of artists over the last few decades, including notably providing backing vocals on the Misfits 2003 album Project 1950. Ronnie has also worked with acts such as the Raconteurs, the Yeah Yeah Yeahs, Patti Smith, and Keith Richards. In 2007, despite Phil Spector's campaign, the Ronettes were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Spector died from cancer on January 12, 2022, at 78. At the time of her death, she was living with her former manager, Jonathan Greenfield, in Danbury, Connecticut. The couple got married in 1982 and had two sons together, Austin Drew and Jason Charles. A film is currently in the works for a film adaptation of Ronnie's memoir, Be My Baby, with actress Zendaya slated to play her. Now it's time to hear from you. What are your fondest memories of Ronnie Spector? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.